really, really. Thank you. And uh, first and foremost, as the, the second of our showcases for the Tulika project, just a big thank you to Emilio for joining us for the second time uh, to showcase Apropedia, the wonderful platform, and how the open source projects are hosted there. So we really appreciate you being with us again. And uh, for today, we have um, some of our other project, I guess, uh, founders and project creators. So we have um, Anna and Yuri, we have Martin, and we have um, myself as well as um, Robin and Annika. So we'll be going through a few of the different projects and just yeah, looking forward to sharing this experience with you all today as well. And Aziz will of course also be just introducing the projects as we go forward. So the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, just give you guys a bit of background about the Tolico project and big involvement and a bit of the agenda. So we'll be looking at the introduction by myself, then by Aziz has mentioned, the water filtration system uh, by Artem and um, also Annika from Bangladesh, Ukraine, the business models. Um, Yuri and Anna will join us a bit later in the call. So they might not be in the second um, position here, but they'll be part of that with us. As well as Martin from Kenya, who'll be sharing a bit about the 3D printed house, which is one of the workshops, which is based and showcased on Apropedia. And then uh, the Maslow 4, which is one of, I guess, the really exciting ones because it's a vertical CNC machine, but I'm not going to say too much, but I, I quite love that coming from the Fab Lab background. Um, and then Apropedia, Emilia will be sharing that from El Salvador. So, yeah, going forward. Uh, just a bit about GIG, uh, for those of you who do not know. Um, we are a unique global network of social and technology innovators. We have members from over 40 different countries. And one of the aims that we have as GIG is to try and facilitate co-creation and exchange, especially on an open hardware front. And uh, we use the term global, meaning global and local, so global. Um, and GIG, you know, meaning, you know, global innovation gathering. So um, it's a diverse community of innovation hubs, makers, make spaces but I think one thing that sets us apart from other organizations or networks is that we really have a human-centered approach and each of the members um, is somebody that we know personally and that we work with and connect with and this is part of how Tula Clark came apart um, and working together with Ukrainian makers because we're trying to connect from the gig universe to that of the Ukrainian universe and uh, create projects together so it's an interesting way for us to facilitate um, exchanges between the global and the local. So um, we work together on a co-design project and we work between different makers uh, throughout Ukraine and through the Gig Network to build these um, open hardware projects. And we have teams from very, very many different countries, which is quite exciting and amazing to see. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's from Uganda, so Africa, Kenya to Brazil, so the global south. Um, and then to Bangladesh, Scotland, so Europe and the UK as well. So it's something very exciting, I think, as a project overview as well. So what we tried to do, which is a bit challenging because the there was quite a difference between the the languages and also being in war torn zones, that it's not that easy to be able to maybe be in that mind frame where you want to create things and being able to process and, and have access to different types of materials. So what we did was try to create an exchange between people who are working on similar types of projects. And uh, this is how our teams were developed and put together. And last week we had a bit of a profile on the first teams and then the second teams as well. So this is a showcase of, of the a few that we mentioned as well now. And I'm gonna hand over to Aziz to give you a bit of an insight into um, the project that we'll be hearing about today. So thanks Aziz and I'll hand over to you. Uh, thank you, Kirsten. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. So can you see my screen now? Yeah, okay. Good. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Aziz and I'm a part of uh, GIG team. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you all for joining and participating in this uh, session. And thanks for the guys who participated in the first one and welcome for those who just joined. Uh, so in the coming a few minutes and slides, I'm going to 
give an overview about Gig's work in supporting the Tolo Car project. Uh, so the Global Innovation Gathering uh, gig is providing support by, let's say, facilitating connection and collaboration between Ukrainian makers and global makers. So those connections and those bridges that gig builds uh, between maker between global and Ukrainian makers transfer knowledge in and out. Uh, so let's say, for example, a product is thought somewhere in the world and it's prototype somewhere else inside Ukraine. And then we have a product like ideation happening somewhere and the implementation happening somewhere else inside Ukraine. So like looking at the picture that we have in the, in, in the background, in fact, this collaboration, there are many in ingredients and are were mixed together. Like while keeping in mind the concepts of distributed and decentralized manufacturing uh, as they become an attractive approach, especially when we think about continuing crisis context. So GIG in fact builds those connections and establishes the bridges for makers to speak with each other and let knowledge flow to build things that matter while keeping an eye on the future. Uh, where sustainability and enabling knowledge uh, through sharing and reusing is really a part and important part it, uh, in the project. Uh, so like behind each project that we have in this, in this program, there is a big story. Uh, there have been a lot of effort, discussion, investment and innovation happening to reach to this level of outcomes and uh, outputs. Uh, let's say I'm, I'm going to give just a quick overview about each project just to have an idea. Uh, like, and while I'm, I'm like giving this overview about those projects, keep in mind about the different sectors we are trying to, 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 to work on or to touch. For example, the business model toolkit, uh, Yuri from Ukraine and Anna from, from Scotland, they found that the financial sustainability is always a challenge in each maker space. So they wanted to make something about this point. Uh, for the CNC router, Romani from Ukraine and Baruch from the US, they wanted to do something and to enable each maker space to have its own CNC router that could be affordable when, when thinking about its cost. Uh, Jan from Ukraine and Boga from Uganda, uh, they wanted to do something about all those debris and to reuse and to, to, to make something useful from the, 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 and the debris everywhere and to, to reconstruct them in a, in a useful way. The 3D printer, which is a big palliative 3D printer, uh, and this is really an interesting project because those guys, Roman from Ukraine and also from Bondan from Ukraine, they wanted or they, they thought in a different way about plastic recycling. Away from just making like plastic sheets or making uh, like plastic tiles, they wanted to do something different and to enable maker spaces to print uh, recycled plastics and to use pellets to do something useful. Uh, Artem from Ukraine and Annika from Bangladesh, uh, they wanted to make something for environment. And uh, they, they, built a, they built a project about filtering water using uh, solar energy. Alexandra and Mariana from Ukraine, Ukraine uh, they put their experience and work history to do something about uh, administration and management of maker spaces maker spaces to make sure that work will continue flowing in, in a nice way. Uh, Konstantin from Ukraine and myself from Jordan, uh, we worked on building a prosthetic device for those who lost, who lost their uh, upper limbs. And my friend Emilio from El Salvador, uh, he built a nice and great website where people can document their work and also anyone can go to the Apropedia and just look for the project that is interesting for him and start replicating and rebuilding. 
also away from the projects we have a group of workshops uh, which 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 are like an open source workshop uh, anyone can go and like go into step by step workshop for on different uh, aspects and different subjects uh, martin from kenya he built a nice 3d printed smart house that people can learn what is iot uh, mariana from brazil and sama and numbers from iraq they built something uh, they built a device that where you can generate a bio gas and use it for like daily life uh, Saad from uh, Singapore, he worked in a workshop that enabled people to work on EOS and to think in a different way uh, about laptops uh, and to use them in, to do something different. Uh, Rosanna, uh, she built something about children and, uh, and finally Matthew from Uganda, he built a mobile repair lab where you can take your repair lab everywhere to do your repair job. Finally, uh, I'm going to show some numbers, uh, like although those numbers will not show the complete story in the in, in the back scene, but it's good to have some like statistics here. So in, in this project, uh, 13 countries were involved, including Ukraine, and uh, seven projects were built and five workshops. Uh, the percent of males to females makers were 64 to 36 percent. We have uh, 14, 14 male makers and eight female makers. And uh, like thinking about the numbers of makers from inside Ukraine and the number of global makers, we have uh, nine Ukrainian makers. Uh, and on the other hand, we have 12 uh, global makers. Thank you very much, and hopefully that was useful. And back to you, Kirsten. I think you're muted, Kay. You are muted. Sorry. Uh, thank you, Chama. So, um, yeah, just a big thanks to Aziz for the overview as well. And just to mention that we will go through each of the presentations and we'll have some time for questions and answers at the end and uh, hopefully a good conversation with everybody that's here today. And just really nice to see so many of you with us, uh, Gertrude, Ricardo, Eric, Susan, Rodro, Simon, Vicky, everybody, just really, really nice to have you here with us today. So um, we'll hand over to the first presentation for today. And uh, as mentioned, we will have um, Anna and Yuri, but they'll be a little bit later uh, than planned originally. So Autumn, um, Annika, we will hand over to you for this presentation. So Annika, if you'd like to uh, share your screen, feel free and looking forward to hearing more about your project. Uh, hi, uh, like Annika will present, but uh, on behalf of her from the screen, I, Mubashir Tahmid, will share the screen. Uh, is it uh, available for me to share? Yes, it is. Uh, let me just... Uh, me... Yes, you should be able to share, but... Yes. Yeah. And Anika will present. Uh, Thank you. Is my screen visible? That'll be great. Uh, not yet, but I'm going to make your show just in case oh, that helps. Me... Yes, now you now? can share. Thank you, Mu. Yes, please go ahead. Yes, Anika, you are good to go. Um, hello, am I audible? Yes, you are. Yes. Okay, hi everyone. I am Anika Nawamim and I work with the team from Bangladesh which was responsible for designing, prototyping and localizing a suitable filter to tackle the water challenges in Ukraine regarding which uh, which was uh, supposed to be explained by Artem, but uh, for some reason he was unable to join today. So uh, um, I have Mubashit Hamid with me today as uh, well another partner within this project. When we started to work with this, our design principle was uh, to make a suitable product in the humanitarian context. We aim to design a filter that would be portable 
that will be easy to use for anyone without much technical difficulty and much effort. And we targeted a purification system that can provide protection from a wide variety of pollutants ranging from heavy metal to fecal sludge. <laughs> During this effort, Tetra from Bangladesh, represented by Vubashit Tahmid, presented in this call, who are a water tech company and got multiple recognition for designing suitable climate vulnerable committees to <coughs> charge of designing the filtration system. Field ready with access to Fab Labs in Bangladesh was responsible for prototyping phase where they also took care of documenting and standardizing the process. Team Auschief Lab represented by Artem provided support in ensuring the process uh, can be localized. At the end, the whole process was made open source for Ukraine by documenting the steps in Apropedia. During this project, we designed, designed two prototypes and kept the future scope for one. The first one, which is suitable for establishing a common point in camp, can produce nearly 500 liters of water per day and is suitable for a common use of 10 families altogether. This uses a standard five-layer purification process with a standard reverse osmosis system. This can be dismantled easily and can be replaced at a very short notice. The second one was more modular and portable one. The whole devices, device closes in a box and can be carried easily like a briefcase. The third one, which is uh, a future scope of working together with the Toloka team is a small modification of the first one, which can be attracted with a attached with a tolo car for smooth water supply in the humanitarian con context. The first phase of the whole work was to design the filters and make the laundry list of required materials. These designs were documented in Apropedia and the material availability was ensured in Ukraine. Once the material was ensured, the filters were designed in Fab Labs. Uh, uh, and then the whole process was documented in Apropedia. These are some CAD drawings that we uh, did during the design phase. You can see the filters from different angles here. We used Autodesk Fusion 360 for the designing filters. For designing the filters. And these are some screenshots from the fabrication phase of both of the prototypes. And here is two finished products. And this is the process that is followed within the filter generation fresh water output. From water to reservoir, a 12 volt DC pump bridges brings the water to a PPF filter, which removes impurities like iron and sediment from the water. Then through a low pressure switch, water goes into chlorination process that fixes the odor test and kills the germs. The next layer is a UDF that ensures the chlorine and other organic chemicals are not present in the output water. Then comes the most important part where the RO system with alkaline filter removes the heavy metal and other pollutants and balances the minerals and pH. That's all from my end. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we are like Oh, no, please go ahead, Moon. No, no, I just like if anyone have any question about the project, so we are here to answer. Uh, I think we'll do the questions at the end, but if there is anybody that has a question now, that we 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 can welcome. To, yeah, we can welcome that. If there is anything, otherwise we'll do it at the end if that's okay. And just first of all, thank you so much for sharing that and for your wonderful work because it's such a necessary thing to have water filtration in these types of contexts. So really appreciate what you guys have done and uh, all the great work you did so thank you very much um with um anna and uh, yuri they will be a bit later in the day so martin if you don't mind i'll hand over to you to give us a bit of a run through of your project uh, before we hand over to to you roman uh, martin i can unmute you but uh, I'm going to guess you want to unmute yourself. Okay. Maybe in the meantime, um, just going to check. So, 
Roman, are you with us? Could you present your project in the in the meantime before we hear from Martin? Oh, Martin, there you are. Okay, I see you. Please go ahead. <laughs> cool. Okay. All the way um, from Kenya. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, let me see if I can share. You should be able to, but I mean, you know, te technical glitches are part of the process when we, you know, we have these calls. So do not fear. This is part of the matrix. Okay. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm I'm trying to to share my screen. No problem. Go go for. All right. Oh, yeah. It's loading. Perfect. Thanks. All right, thank you. Now, let me start with the introduction. My name is Martin Olo, I'm founder of Fab Lab Winner. I'm also uh, in the leadership of uh, the Global Innovation Gathering. Uh, and of, of course, an, an ongoing uh, member of the board of the Association of Countrywide Hubs in Kenya. Uh, Today I needed, actually I had two of my team members, Rabin Otino and Charles Wangara, who are to do this, but unfortunately one of them is sick and the other one is doing presentation in another school. Uh, we have another program called ESTEM, which we are running in schools where we are, uh, they are working on practical activities around uh, solar installation. Right, so thank you for giving us this chance. Uh, to make this presentation, and we've been happy to be part of Toloka. So um, our activity is um, we were de we developed 3D printed smart house model, and the reason for this is to help learners to easily learn about IoT. And we were also making sure that we include the the 3D printing. So basically. Uh, Internet of Things is currently a technology that is uh, uh, very much needed and and uh, is of great essence. Um, uh, many organizations, many uh, institutions need it for the interconnectedness of uh, networks, physical devices, appliances, and, and many others. So um, it is important that um, students at younger age can start understanding how the sensors work, how they can be connected, and how they can develop various pro projects with it. So we decided to use the concept of Smart House to develop learning kit, and it's make it easy for IoT to be uh, learned. Of course, I, I am having the physical item here, and uh, yeah, if I would be able to showcase uh, how it works, that would be great. Um, so we designed the parts for 3D printing, which were printed and can be easily assembled and disassembled. Uh, and that one makes it easy for uh, anyone in the event that you want to transport it to another location, you simply remove parts and then you, you move with it. Um, we have also used, um, uh, Okay, for the designing, we we did the we have the CAD files, we have the circuit, the diagram, and uh, various components. So we used three systems. We have the uh, Bluetooth control lighting system. We have introduced intruder alert um, alarm system, and we have temperature and humidity um, recording system. Um, as I'm making a presentation, let me just show you that just one minute. So I don't know if you are able to, to see it. You can see the readings of the temperature and humidity here. And the noise you hear is basically because of um, the intruder alert system that we are using. So these, we've, we've, we decided to just use a few, a few sensors to showcase 
what is possible, but um, the smart house system gives us opportunity where students are able to learn a number of sensors and how they can be applied in real life. So here are some of the, um, these are the images of parts of the 3D printed parts, and you can see that they can be easily assembled. And, uh, and then we, we are using development boards and uh, this one is much easier to help us in easy connections. However, they have their own challenges. So in our case, we used uh, Arduino Uno and uh, we are able to show various sensors how it can, they can be connected. Now, some of the challenges is that uh, um, uh, implementation of multiple systems can be cumbersome when you are using um, this because there is uh, interconnectedness of wires and and all that. So it would be much easier if probably we we were, we, we develop um, a PCB or or maybe uh, using breadboard and and also just soldering uh, parts because uh, using loose wires at times become very, very difficult. Some of them get plugged off anytime. So basically that is, that is what we developed and it is used majorly to help students easily learn IoT and, um, and 3D printing. Thank you. Thanks, Martin. And I think it's a, it's one of the interesting ones because IoT is everywhere and it's part of the 5G kind of generation. And, uh, you know, when it comes to solar and implementing lighting and in different infrastructures, I think it's a really viable and vital kind of resource to be able to have that. So, you know, it might seem like, you know, something a bit more technologically advanced, but at the same time, the thing about it is that we can use these infrastructures in the housing whether it is, as one example we discussed, like doing uh, security, you know, having sensors for security to access and, and exit your housing, to put your lights on and off, or I think one of the first times I ever went to Kenya, they were doing a, a coffee brewing using mm -hmm. uh, sensors and uh, different IoT. So I think that's something that it can be replicated in many different ways and used. And yeah. um, I think it's a, a super cool resource to have. So thank you so much. Yes, actually, even right now, the project that we are doing with schools for under Eastern, we it's it's basically um, introducing children on how they can do simple connection of solar. But we've also used uh, an IoT part of it where they are learning about simple irrigation system because we are looking at how to make uh, classroom lessons to become more practical and also how children can start thinking about local problems and building solutions around them. So yeah, that is what we do. And the files for this project can be found in Apropedia. Uh, Thank you. Thank you so much, Martin. Thank you. And uh, more qu questions and answers at the end of the session. Um, so now I saw Yuri joined us. Um, Yuri, I'm not sure if Anna's here yet, but um, are you able to share your screen and to present a bit about the business models? Nice to see you, Yuri. Uh, uh, hello. Yeah, happy to see you here. We have business model uh, document. Uh, my part is in Ukrainian. I could share the English one. So uh, what we basically uh, done uh, with Anna, uh, I was a part of uh, Anna's research funded by uh, Geek and uh, JZ on business model for makerspaces. And we add uh, <clears throat> to this research, uh, six uh, six uh, Ukrainian makerspaces and one small manufacturing business. And Anna made an interview with uh, these uh, spaces and business, and this part uh, was added to to research to to final document. Uh, you can you can find this final document in Ukrainian at our website of Ukrainian Maker Association, and uh, for English language, uh, I also share with you the links. 
later in in this chat so um okay this is ukrainian one you know yuri i think it's okay to do it in in ukrainian because it's about ukraine okay. you know you can just talk <laughs> us through it so why not <laughs> oh, okay um, I, I will just uh, make you co-host they can share that so i think that's perfect mm -hmm. okay uh, yeah let me uh, share english one because uh, of uh, people who uh, who here today at this meeting i think it will be uh, uh, proper oh uh, uh can share my screen, correct? Yes, you should be able to. It should be fine. Okay. Cool. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um... Okay. um so um yeah and uh, uh from my perspective this is one of the most important documents for every makerspace uh possible because the most challenging thing is not to open a makerspace but but to run it successfully to manage the community to uh, help people to get some basic skills to prototype and maybe to help them to start own business and for all of this we need to have uh, uh we we need the funds to uh to run the space to live on something so and there is no one silver bullet uh, there is no one uh, right way and this is the reason, and, and, and yeah, and uh, it's uh, content dependent. It's uh, from country to country, and even in, in inside one country, it's again, uh, there's a lot of different business models and combination. And why this document is important uh, for our makerspaces, and of course in English for, I, I, I hope it will be very useful and important for all over the world, because uh, here, uh, researchers uh, find and combine different tools to fund these spaces, to get this funding and to make uh, wheels, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, 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 uh, to uh, uh, make this story happen and to find uh, maybe new ways to uh, find uh, collaboration funding or to provide services or to grow in 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 house competence uh, to share some uh, to to export services and uh, during this uh, preparation during the work on this document there was different sessions and uh, we heard on, on, uh, again uh, we heard about different models business models uh, uh, my one of my favorites as a kind of in, in engineering geek uh, geek uh, type was uh, uh, prototyping services that I heard from Egypt uh, from FabLab Egypt. Uh, this is uh, it not not so, not very obvious, but you have uh, you have to grow competence in your space in FabLab a makerspace, and then uh, to, to, you have to build trust from the uh, kind of customers and you have to uh, build this infrastructure to be able to provide these services because uh, a lot of people came to to spaces and they oh you have you have equipment could you please uh, make make for me a small batch parts or or prototypes and uh, what i've heard from our uh, local fab lab that it's always challenging to build product from a scratch, especially if it goes about different aspects, it electronics and uh, the the um, 
uh, housing and uh, the uh, uh, exclosure or uh, pro prototyping it, when it combines different type of techniques it become a kind of uh, engineering piece and and uh, and this is an engineering part i think it's not uh, it's interested for me personally it's my kind of personal interest but it's not uh the most important one because there is uh, more other uh, other services like uh, education and uh, and events and entertainment and then consulting and and business services and startup support so it could be different types of of uh, uh, of uh, services that makerspaces could provide to raise more funding and uh, we described it, uh, uh, we, my part was to translate and test it here. And uh, my part is not finished it yet because we want to, uh, we want to announce uh, this document to makerspaces in offline format. We will be able to, we will be able to do this on March second, second when we pr producing Maker Fair here in Ukraine, so on discussion panel we have uh, time to present this research and some of uh, residents from different maker spaces from all around the country. They will discuss um, services described in these documents. Some of, for example, uh, Hak, famous, yeah, in, in Ukrainian community, it's famous uh, Hack Club Hackerspace. They, uh, they provided services for external audience and uh, they will, uh, will share the experience, how it goes and what is, what is the pros and cons on, on this and how to prepare to provide the services in their environment they they kind of big hacker space uh, big space and what uh, smaller spaces could get from this uh, from yeah from this experience so uh, now this is in ukrainian this is a, a slide about different types of educational services with uh, uh, with uh, main partners and then resources we have and segmentation and proposal channels and customer relations and uh, uh, expenses structure. So this document covering all aspects uh, some space could need. I, I'm really, really happy that there is uh, such such uh, uh, research and business and, and catalog of business models. Yeah. Thanks so much, Yuri. And I mean, I think it's a it's an amazing resource, as you say. And I think the most interesting thing is that, you know, we can never tell which way to make a business model out of a makerspace when it comes to places that are in strife or struggling. You know, I think that's one of the most challenging things. Over and above that, you know, even just trying to make a makerspace profitable in general is a challenge coming from the Fab Lab backgrounds and things. So, you know, whether or not it be in Ukraine where there's a struggle to try and get the parts, the, you know, fundamental kind of resources that you need, all these types of things, like just the parts, like 3D printing material is one example. Um, you know, it's it's a, it's a challenge either way you slice it, as I can put it in a more African context, but for Ukraine as well, just figuring out how to build business models. And you guys have done such amazing work. I think it's phenomenal. So um, I know Anna just popped in and joined us as well. So maybe she wants to say a few words as well uh, before we pass on. But Yuri, yes, if you have anything to add there, please go ahead. Uh, I just want, want to add that uh, it, it was my pleasure to work in uh, collaboration with Anna because I'm le learning from her every time we we talking about anything. So it, 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 it was... Uh, from my perspective and understanding, uh, there's no mm, no experts uh, inside our countries who who could uh, who would make it uh, uh, so, 
so fast and so professional uh and uh, why again why it's important for for ukraine my, my feeling two years ago when this second invasion started was that if we we for example if we want to ask funding for maker spaces there will be funds but it was not right time because uh i am i was uh, clearly understanding that these spaces will be closed in six, eight months or right after the, the end of financing. Because, th again, this is the easiest part to get some people and buy some equipment. This is kind of obvious things. And the most important part is what is described in these documents and, and finally and happily now in Ukrainian. So, yeah, I, I, I was just overexcited, I think, about this part of project and, and happy... I've been invited here, so thank you for such an opportunity for Geek, and uh, uh, yeah, and thanks Anna for helping uh, much more than around this document. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks Yuri, for... that's such a lovely sentiment, and Anna, please over to you. Hey, I was just going to say thanks for saying that, Yuri, and I also wanted to say what a pleasure it has been working with you. Um, and I um, have, you know, come to have such such enormous respect for the work that Yuri is doing and many other makers and maker spaces and people running them across Ukraine. Um, and, you know, I really think that the the work they're doing in in the face of this invasion um, is is so important for the future of the country. Um, and um, yeah. I, glad to be able to support that in a very small way from afar um and uh, the the only other thing i wanted to add i, I don't know if, if you you already covered this maybe but um through the um the gig and tolokar project we were also able to include ukrainian maker spaces in the um, research that we did to produce the catalog so we spoke to a total of six um ukrainian maker spaces um, to understand their their histories and their stories um, and and the models that they um, are using either now or in the past and that was yeah extremely insightful so yeah it's been been great working on this thank you yeah thanks and I think that's so nice because it's a you know admin is not always the easiest task and and thinking about business models you know so uh, maybe in many cases when it comes to maker spaces we'd be sitting there uh, creating you know hardware or, or things like that but actually there's the backbone of all of these institutions that needs to be thought about and needs to be harmonized and uh, that's not always so easy so yeah i think it's a, a great collaboration and thanks anna and yuri for, for sharing with us today so we really appreciate that um so roman would be joining us but aziz is going to share a little bit now about the cnc machine in the interim yeah thank you uh Kirsten. Yeah, I'm 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 going to show or to say something about uh, a CNC project. Uh, can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay, that's good. So this is the Propedia page for the Maslow 4 CNC router. And uh, uh, like back in history, the Maslow CNC was started six years ago by Bar Smith, and he's from the United States. And the idea of this project is to build affordable CNC router that like any maker in any maker space can build it and can have it inside the place. So uh, the, the, the idea about this, I'm, I'm going to show this like short video for this machine. Like, as you can see that the, this is a vertical uh, CNC router where the, like, the working board is like fixed in a vertical way. And we have uh, like everything compacted in this space shuttle looking thing. This is the circular, like the disc, the, the alien disc that is moving. Uh, inside this disc, disc there is the, the spindle and there, there's the, like, the tension sensors. And we have everything uh, like fixed using four threads or uh, something like that, uh, where the, there's a, a complex or sophisticated algorithm inside the controller for this device 
that will measure and calculate the tension in each uh, thread and then uh, from those calculation it will determine its current position and go for the next position so as i said the idea is to make something affordable and um, that the cost for this device should be something between 500 to 1000 dollar and it can work on a full size sheet which is 8 by 4 uh, feet yeah uh, let me close this one. Yeah. So, like, and as I said, this project was started six years ago, and this version, which is like shared by the Apopedia, is the Maslow four. So we can understand this is number four or version four. And in fact, uh, while working with those guys, there are many uh, improvements uh, were added to this uh, uh, version. Uh, you can have everything uh, you need to know about this project in Apropedia page, uh, in the Totolo car page in Apropedia. And uh, this is a picture for the mm -hmm. disk where you can see the spindle is centralized. And then we can have, we have four different uh, gear DC motors that will, uh, let's say that, Measure the tension and also position the disc for the right position. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. I think I I think this is a, a really quick introduction about this project. Uh, it's really mm -hmm. unfortunately like Roman was not able to join, and this is bar by the way, and this is really not clear. Yeah, this is bar from the United States. And like he's holding his his proud about <laughs> this project, yeah, and uh, yeah, and yeah. I think that's it. If you want to know more about it, please uh, visit Apropedia page, and you can know about it. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Aziz. Yeah, I think that's a good summary, and it's it's really cool if you've ever been in a fab lab and uh, tried to put together a massive uh, CNC machine, which you usually have to put together by the different parts, which are hugely exceptionally heavy and build the table and put the <clears throat> bed together uh, compared to a vertical version, which is uh, quite amazing to have as a comparison. Um, yeah, it's a very big difference. So I think that's it's quite a phenomenal feat as well. And uh, Yuri, thanks for sharing that uh, bar was at the Austrian platform as well. And also that they were featured in the Make magazine. And Emilio, it is your time to shine. So handing over to you to share a bit about uh, Apopedia and where we can find all these files. and. Um, your resource that you've created, which is phenomenal. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, allow me to share my screen. I can't see the button to share my screen. Oh, there it is. Oh, All right. Um, yeah, I, I will begin by um, sharing the front page of the Tolar Car project, where you can see uh, all the different uh, projects that were shared today and some others. Uh, that I, um, I'd i like to, you know, just, just to share the idea that uh, beside being an authoring tool, we want Apropedia to be a collaboration space uh, during the time of the project and then afterwards. And the other aspect that I think is really relevant is that this project showcases the work of communicating uh, outputs of a project from a technical perspective. So this is not only uh, the usual uh, brief that you share to stakeholder, uh, donor of a project or uh, general public saying, hey, this is what we did, but rather it has information about how to build uh, build some materials. So th these are some of the examples that were shared today. Uh, so this really showcases how people can use all of this documentation to reproduce, to build upon, to uh, expand the work. And um, this this is a, an example of uh, some of the pages in Ukrainian. Some of these were um, created in Ukrainian, but some others are uh, not even part of the total car project, but translations, automatic translations that we've uh, stored on the platform. So this this really shows the uh, the extent that we want to bring in the different people speaking different languages from different places, um, 
to to work on this. Uh, so yeah, having said this, the the you know the main uh, concept in mind is resilience. How can we make all of this work resilient that it can withstand uh, the the passing of time so that people, uh, newcomers to the community in two, three years can look at these projects and say, hey, we can do some other things, or we can expand on some of the work that was done before, uh, and how we can deliver all of this information to people who are needing it, right? So, um, and the big challenge of this being technical documentation is the fact that we not only have narrative content, but also uh, media, we have uh, 3D, printed, uh, 3D printing files and other technical um, electronics, et cetera, et cetera. So um, bringing all of this together in a way that's coherent, that tells a story, that can help other people reproduce is the main goal uh, of the work that we did as Apropedia. We started by um, sharing people how other projects were uh, documented on the platform. And Apropedia is very much focused on social impact and sustainability. So um, this is a very niche space for people who are doing projects of this type. Uh, so we were able to explain how um, some other people have been doing before and then accompanying the work, creating, for example, templates for the documentation and showcasing who are the authors, uh, what are the uh, main files that were shared, et cetera, and, and then bringing this into the public. Uh, so this will be available uh, for everyone to see. And after a process of curation, of evaluating all the projects and say, hey, this is missing, for example, a photo or a uh, build of materials, et cetera. So caring for the quality um, before the end of the project, and then uh, also at the same time opening it up for other people to build upon. Um, yeah, so right now we have a, a lot of pages uh, for this project between the, the gig, um, uh, led uh, creation of uh, initiatives and then some others that were added. Uh, and then finally, I can mention some of the lessons learned first thinking of platforms, uh, not only as authoring tools, but also as collaboration hubs, spaces where people can come in, uh, take over a long period of time to create the documentation, and also us helping during the processes by monitoring, evaluating, and um, uh, helping create all of these um, knowledge products that can be shared to the world. Um, and finally, thinking about documentation for digital and al analog publishing, for example, uh, having these pages made ready for um, printing so they can be created into booklets, for example, uh, uh, bring in a printer and then share with uh, people in the makerspace in an area where connectivity is not uh, uh, persistent and also uh, some other ways of bringing all of this content uh, to people in Ukraine. So that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Emilio. I mean, it's of course amazing. So yeah, I think it's so nice to have a repository where we can have everything stored. And as you say, where we can add to it and uh, keep it moving, exchanging, growing, whatever needs to be done as it's applied to different um, scenario. So I think that's really amazing. And I will open the floor now. We do still have a few minutes, but of course it was great content. So we did run a bit over time, but um, maybe if anybody has any questions, you are welcome to speak freely. It's not a um, bureaucratic scenario. So if anybody has any questions, feel free. Um, I will ask, let's see who to be the first person with a question, I will go to Ricardo. Any question? I have one question, but it's relative to the beginning of the presentation when Aziz shared the numbers. Uh, just because male and female was like 8% for male and 14% for, no, no, 14% for male and 8 for female. And then I thought, hmm, 
22. You know, so I didn't understand the percentage very well that were in the graphics, but was my only question. Well, Aziz is an engineer, so I'll hand over to him to give uh, feedback on the numbers for the female male. I, 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 yes, yes, Ricardo. I, I, um, I think I didn't get your question. So, like, can you repeat it, please? It's because 8 plus 14, it's not 100%. And it's male and females. Uh, yeah. You see? So that was what I didn't get in that moment. Uh, like, uh, like, uh, are you asking about the numbers? Because like we have 14 males and eight females, which is 22, right? In the chart, it was a 14% and 8%, right? No, no, it's like, it's like uh, okay, let me share my screen again, sorry. Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so like uh, uh, those are the like eight and 14 is the absolute numbers and the percent is 64 percent to 36 percent. Oh, OK. So like we have that we have the numbers as absolute numbers and we have the percent as well. So like so if you like numbers, then you have the number. And if you if you like person, you. Then you I have thought the person. it was like. <laughs> Eight to 36, 14, 64, you know? Okay, uh, thank you. It's, it's okay, no, no problem, thank you. And one more thing that is not a question. I 100% agree with you, Yuri. Uh, the business model catalog. Way, hipper, hipper, who? Great. Uh, anybody else for any questions? Uh, maybe... Uh, Andrew, you put your camera on, meaning that you have something yeah, to share. Yeah, I'd like to just share. congratulate everybody. Um, the more I learned about this project, the more excited it is. I didn't realize it had been um, uh, that so many people around the world had supported uh, the Tolokar project, and it's been great to get an insight into that today. So congratulations, everyone, and thank you for sharing all of your work today. Really, really exciting. Well done. No questions. <laughs> just congratulations. Oh, thanks, Andrew. That's really nice to hear, especially with your background and knowing, you know, all the things you've done. And uh, yeah, I think we can also really appreciate that feedback. So thank you. Um, Sandra, yeah. And I want to go after Andrew with congratulating everyone, because I also want to congratulate Kirsten and Chaima and Aziz uh, for putting this wonderful showcase together and for the, hosting this event and uh, explaining everything so wonderfully. And uh, also, I want to thank uh, Zara and Lina, who are our contacts at the GIZ, who are yeah, making this all possible uh, through the support of the German Ministry for Development and for Economic Collaboration. So that is uh, just an amazing um, contribution you're enabling. And to Vicky for also creating this project with everyone. Uh, Thanks, Sandra. And uh, Lena, was it interesting for you to learn a bit more about the projects from last week to this week? Um, we re really appreciate you being in both of the calls, of course. So, yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's always amazing to see what comes out of um, this initiative and um, see the variety of, of different um, projects. I'm really looking forward to what comes next <laughs> and where this uh, develops to. Um, and we were especially, um, Sarah and I, we were listening especially um, all with um, a lot of attention because I am currently writing the standard report, which we have to um, um, send to the donor very soon. So it's always good to put some um, concrete examples um, and make it more lively um, and not only have this typical um, donor report wording phrases, um, but to give concrete examples. Um, and um, Zara is preparing some stories where we would, of course, also include some of the examples that have been presented today. So thank you very much for presenting and thank you even more for participating and contributing in such a great way. 
thank you so much. And yeah, I think as you say, uh, Lena, it's it's quite different because it, I think in the general donor terminology, this would not be your normal call. <laughs> so, you know, like it's nice to share and be kind of humans that uh, have context and like share what they've been doing and have more like a conversation compared to maybe the white papers or things that we're used to when it comes to donor funding, I guess, without the personal or the human side which is kind of nice to sit around a table and have a conversation in this context so thank you so much and we really appreciate the support i think uh yuri was about to say something because he turned on the cameras please go ahead oh well you're not but, but maybe if you do oh, okay. I, I, yeah, yeah of course, I, I want to thank again thanks again to geek and to jz for this opportunity because again this is top of the notion and most important document we needed uh, to to start building this uh, sustainable community. Thanks again. Yeah, thank you so much, Yuri. And uh, thank you, Anna, as well, Aziz, um, to Martin, to, yeah, Emilio, of course. Thank you. Would you like to say something as well? Because when the camera goes on, I feel like I have to just pass the mic because that's the digital realm, right? Thank you for putting me on the spot. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I love you all. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> great projects. I am uh, super excited about the outcome uh, and I look forward to see what comes next. Yeah, thanks. And I mean, this can't be the end, right? I think everybody's done such a great job in terms of collaborating. And as we mentioned in the beginning, it was quite a challenge when it comes to the barriers for trying to understand the languages. Yuri is one example between languages, English, uh, Spanish, you know, whichever way it goes, uh, to Ukrainian, that was very interesting. Uh, you know, Martin, you can say from just Kenyan English to English to Scottish English to, you know, British English with, you know, it's quite a different uh, kettle of fish, so to say. So I think there's been many, many different things when it comes to that. And um, it's been quite an exploratory um, experience, but just collaborating is is it's quite different. So uh, Vicky, your camera's on, so I'm gonna totally hand the mic to you. <laughs> no, I just, I, I was just sitting here um, looking at all of you and then I thought, oh, I'm, I'm, being, I'm being not nice with having my camera off. Um, I have a question for Yuri actually, and also joining in in the thanks and loving the fact that we don't have uh, reporting calls here, but, but human calls and, um, my question is, so if I'm a maker anywhere in the world, is there any chance for me to somehow see something that's happening at Maker Fair next week? Uh, um, it's challenging to get uh, to to get uh, professional cameras there because it's kind of distributed uh, 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 makers distributed around the location but we inviting opinion leaders or instagram influencers and people like this and, and in makers area in ukraine there is not so many but i think it will be after the event at our communication we're gonna put some uh after event uh uh, recordings and streams from from the makers and now uh, you can see uh, you can see makers who already uh, approved to uh, be exhibited at maker fair by this link this is a maker fair main domain and with our uh, second level domain uh, you can see here um uh we have uh, we have two challenges. Uh, one of them is a lot of makers switch to defense projects, just a lot. And second is that a lot of makers don't don't have uh, uh, they don't like to move between the cities and around the country. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and this is uh, and this uh, we expect in this the most female maker fair ever. And and yeah, and. Um, but again, we're ex expecting the uh, deputy minister, at least, we're expecting the media. So I think, and and what I am expecting as a producer with a long, long white bird, uh, 
I'm expecting that people with, will be excited because uh, especially at this time, there's a uh, huge, huge demand and need for good emotions that makers could could give to visitors. And this offline type of event uh, around the makers, everything, this is, I think it's what the healing one. So uh, working hard on make it happen. And, and again, uh, thank you for, thanks for all partners uh, to, to be part of this process and to supporting our efforts and, and supporting the event. Thank you. Thank you. Please share the hashtag we can all use. Um, I don't know if any one of us is an influencer, but maybe together we can influence. That sounds great. Uh, let's try to be influencers if we are not already. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure who is among us, but uh, I'm sure somebody is. So, uh, yeah, Charma, perhaps you are the influencer that we need. So please We're go all ahead. Influencers. <laughs> all influencers all the time, each in his own way or That's her true. own. Yeah. That's true. Well, thank you, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. And again, thanks to Yuri, to Anna, to Emilio, to Martin, uh, to Aziz as well, of course, um, to Lena and Sarah, to Vicky, um, Sandra. So just a big thanks to everybody that's been part of this journey, and we really appreciate all the support and, um, yeah, just your time. And to Mu as well. I don't know if they're still with us, but uh, Mu and Annika as well. So just, uh, oh, Mu, you're still there. Okay, great. And uh, that's only a move, just in, in case you think it's rude, it's just because if I say move Bashir, I might not pronounce it correctly. So I go with move, just so you know. Um, but yeah, just a big thanks to everybody and thanks for being part of our calls. And uh, yeah, wishing you a lovely evening and afternoon and morning, wherever you are in the world. And uh, yeah, just a big thanks. And yeah, sending big hugs and gig hugs. And yeah, we will we'll see you again and more of this to come in the future. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Martin. Cheerio. Thank you. Yeah, Martin. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs>